Welcome everyone to Yachting International Radio. You're with Corrine from The Crew Coach on Your Mental Health. And today I have a very special guest with us. And I'm so grateful for Gemma for having the courage to share her story with us today. A very difficult and challenging story, but where she is today is absolutely phenomenal. Her dreams seem to have blossomed if I can use the word blossom to fit in with your yeah. business so <laughs> it's just like a guru in terms of putting flower arrangements together it's her passion it's her love and she has this amazing business I think we we're just discussing our objectives of this call today this interview and recently there has been a number of crew members who have been diagnosed with cancer and Gemma was one of those crew members and she is going to share with us her story, her journey, her breakthrough. And it's go I'm sure this interview will be very raw and honest, but very powerful. And we want to just to share with you um, what Gemma's journey has been like. So yeah, welcome Gemma. Hi. <laughs> um yeah, so I mean, I'm not too sure where you want me to where you want me to start, but I was um, my cancer is cervical cancer. Um, it's actually incurable, so it's gone now to my lymph nodes. Um, it's incurable but treatable. So I, I'm going, currently going through chemotherapy now, um, and then I will just have to be monitored um, after. I think I'm having nine to ten cycles of chemotherapy, and then after that, I'll just be monitored, and yeah, we'll go from there. But so I got diagnosed with yes my cervical cancer back in January this year just gone um obviously in England we have our smear tests done um, mm -hmm. um every three years and it starts at the age of 25 so I first had my one done over here um three years ago come back absolutely fine had my second one done um which would be yeah which would have been my second one and that was three years later come back a little bit abnormal and he said to me oh he said um, I'm gonna need you to come back in three months so my three months would have been when I was um I would have been in the states because I was um currently head of housekeeping on a boat there so I was over there um unfortunately um with costing and stuff it would have been it was cheaper for me to have my um second test done over in the states so had it done there my um consultant here he was like as long as you send through the paperwork it'll be fine done that Anyway, things kind of escalated really quickly. So I, um, yeah, I had it done. I had my smear test. He said that I'm going to need to come back for a biopsy because obviously uh, something something shown up showed up abnormal. So um, yeah, done done that. And then he said to me, yeah, that I need to go for my cone biopsy. Had a cone biopsy, which is where they take like a triangle out of your um, yeah, just out of your cervix. Had that done. He did he did inform me and let me know that if it was to come back um positive with cervical cancer that I'm going to need to have a hysterectomy so I was obviously I was I was holding my um fingers crossed there um I did at the time have my mum did fly over to the states to have my cone biopsy done um we was hoping and praying obviously that I didn't have to have the second surgery mm. anyway the results come back that it was um, positive. So I had to then obviously go into hospital um, to have the operation. The operation was originally meant to be just my cervix being removed. Um, it ended up when I was asleep um, that they did have to, they called my mum and said that I needed to have a full hysterectomy, which was obviously a little bit shocking to her. Um, and obviously I did, I wasn't aware until I woke up, um, the couple, a couple of hours later. So, um, they took my lymph nodes out as well, cause it was showing that there was, um, cancer in my lymph nodes. I had no symptoms whatsoever. Like I didn't have the, like, if you, if you, if you Google symptoms of, um, cervical cancer, I had none of them. I was unfit and I'm healthy. And yeah, it was just the fact that. I, they can't even put a finger on why how, why I've got it. Like I know people have cancer cells in them all the time and it's just if they end up like flaring up and some people obviously have cancer in their genes as well, like families. Mm. But yeah, so that, um, that happened. So that was a little bit, yeah, obviously it kind of took me a while to get kind of get my head around that. But I'm the sort of person that if I 
this all happened when I was on board. So I didn't actually come home um, when I had my, um, when I was getting my test results there. I'm better off if I keep busy. So if I, where I was keeping busy and I was working and we had trips coming up, it was kind of keeping my mind off it. Yeah, I, I had my moments when I was like, finished work and I did kind of think about it. But you've just got to be so positive in this. Like your bright, your, your mind is such a powerful thing that it does react to your body. So the more positive you are, Mm. and like the more like happy you are and you get on you get on get along like with your life in general it's it is better for you I mean it is easy for you to like, kind of go into a little black hole I've seen it and I have I've had it had it myself so um yeah so that happened over in the states I then um needed to have yeah so I had my hysterectomy anyway in the states we covered on board um we covered really really well and then they said to me that I'm gonna need to start my um, chemo and radiation over there well unfortunately the boat that I was on um, had to leave we was based down in Key West so I actually ha I, I had to then fly home to back to England because I wasn't medically fit obviously to, st to still be on board so I've come home to England luckily I was um, put into the system straight away with Covid and stuff I know that they have put a few and um, they did stop a few people's treatments because obviously um, like COVID and not enough beds and stuff and obviously people with cancer needed to um, really really self-isolate so I was quite lucky that I got because I'd already had my surgery they classed me as um, uh, like they classed me as someone that could get done straight away so I yeah I come here and got referred to UCLH in London and that's where I that's where I am now and that's where I'm having my um, yeah chemotherapy so it's it to be honest it's going it's going really well on first this coming thursday will be my um third cycle of chemo um i have my moments where like six days after my treatment that i feel a bit like mm, sort of thing it, i can only describe it as having a really really bad hangover so just think of like your worst hangover and that's exactly how i feel after that but um yeah it's just i mean me starting my business has helped me a lot because it's kept my mind off of it and I've got such a good like support group here I've got Gemma like my best friend and she's been really good I've got my friends here so I think if I if I didn't have any of them then it would have been like a lot harder and the fact that I've already had my surgery to me that was the hardest part of it because it's removing something that's so personal out of you yeah. um like it's removing my ovaries and everything so that that to me was the biggest part having the chemotherapy is I, I know that it's just temporary so that's how I'm kind of working it right now I know that that's temporary but me having my surgery was like that's that's gone now I can't take that back so that's why it's such a big that's why I kind of want to put the word out there that please 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 like go and every time that your smear test is due please go and get it and like all the chief stews out there like go and get go get your girls to go yeah get your girls to go and get it done because it's such like they called it the silent killer and it's the same with breast cancer as well like obviously breast cancer you've got you can get like the lumps and stuff but with cervical cancer and ovarian cancer you get no I mean you can get symptoms but like I had no symptoms I suppose if I would have left it and I wouldn't have gone for my um tests or anything then yeah I could have got a lot worse than what it is but um generally I am they have said to me that my body is fit and I am healthy so as much as it is incurable because it has shot up to my lymph node which happened after um because after after I had my surgery that's when they reckon it moved so in the states they do it they do it kind of a long way around they do it the surgery and then the chemotherapy and the radiation whereas here they do the treatment first and then the surgery okay so so if like if needed sort of thing so yeah like it's such an important thing to go and do and it only literally takes minutes like it's it's not I mean people yes it is um, it is uncomfortable but it's your life at the end of the day and your health so yeah please 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 go and go yeah. and get it done it's it's just it's such a big yeah it's like such a big thing to like to me yeah, and to I'm other people and I know that Gemma done a whole thing with the guy like all the gynecologists around the world so and um, that's all on her website as well so you can see that and any yeah, yeah you can ask me any questions and mm. so yeah sorry I was rambling on a little bit there but yeah so it's just so yeah
so what I was going to ask you oh. was, was the yacht supportive when yeah. you had to do your test and yes. came back on board? Were they supportive and what did that look like? Yes. Yeah, they were completely supportive. Um, obviously, it's, it is a big thing for a young girl to go and tell her captain, which is a bit personal. Um, but I, I originally spoke to my chief stew at the time first. And then, um, yeah, she, quite, she did um, speak to the captain first of all. And then I went and had a meeting with the captain because I felt a little bit more comfortable then. But no, he was, um, he, yeah, he was absolutely fine about the whole thing. Um, he said anything you need like if you've got if you have a moment in the day where you just can't deal with it he said you can just go and take a walk obviously if we're close to shore um but yeah no ev the whole crew was supportive everyone was showing, yeah just so supportive and so genuinely just like caring which is such a big thing to as obviously being in yachting you're such like you're away from home so your boat is your family um i was lucky obviously because i had Gemma on there so it was yeah it's the yacht was supportive going through the whole thing and they just said anything you need um or any appointments that you need to go to then go so yeah so they my answer was yeah they was really supportive Fantastic. To, like towards the whole thing yeah and i know like i can't imagine you know going for surgery thinking one thing's going to happen but then you had another thing happen on top of that and that whole grieving process without being mentally prepared for it how did you cope with that yeah well i mean i'm quite a positive person anyway i do suffer from anxiety a little bit so that kind but i know like, i've got my ways of dealing with that, like like yoga and meditation and stuff so um i mean when when i woke up after the surgery it was I obviously I called my parents first and then it wasn't until um they told me that I mean I, d I don't really think I've got my head around it's it it's just really like it, I was like I was yeah I was too <laughs> I was too out of it really to kind of know what they was talking about when they done it so I did obviously they did retell me the next day when I was kind of like awake and a little bit more with it but it's I mean it's it is my health at the end of the day and I'm like lucky like I'm lucky to be here now and it's yeah it is i'd rather be healthy than like there's all different ways of having children and i can adopt and i mean my mum's adopted so i've always wanted to, i have always wanted to adopt a child so um i've got that aspect of it which is fine um so yeah i mean mm. it, having children wasn't really what i what i thought thought about like now but it's obviously it's now kind of been taken away from me but i've been kind of blessed with something else if that if that mm. kind of makes sense so mm. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, I don't know. I still don't know. Nobody's actually asked me that question. So it's kind of taken me back a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I'm just going to have to deal with. And I have, yeah, I've, I've just started um, with a personal trainer and I'm starting to get back into yoga again, which is good. And I meditate and stuff every night before I go to bed. So that's my way of like dealing with it. And obviously I express my emotions through my flowers as well. So I've got that to keep me busy. So yeah, so that's how, that's kind of how I've, yeah, dealt with it, I suppose. And like going for walks and stuff, but actually having the surgery through, um, through COVID and through lockdown, um, when I was in the States, yeah, it was a big thing. And I was, I was genuinely scared because obviously I had to go in there on my own. Nobody was allowed in the hospital with me. The same again here. Like when I go and have my treatments here, I can only, I can only go in on my own. I mean, my mum was allowed to come with me when I first had my chemotherapy, but now it's, it's actually fine. I think I've become an expert at hospitals now more than anything, to be honest, the amount of times I've been, I've been in and out, but um, yeah, they've been, everyone's been like incredible. So amazing. So how do you describe your grieving process? What did that look like? Did you feel like you? I don't know whether I've actually gone through. I don't know whether I have gone through it yet because I'm so busy. Obviously, where I've launched um, my company and my not my flower stand, I don't know whether I've. Maybe if I was to go on holiday for two weeks, that would be different. Maybe I will then because I would have like nothing to do. Whereas right now, I am keeping busy. I do. I do think about it, but I'm. I would rather like keep busy and not really think about it than like do think about I don't know I don't yeah I don't personally I don't think I have gone through the grieving process yet I yeah. think when I was recovering I think I did a little bit but again I was like 
I was busy sorting out work, like coming home and where I was going to have my treatment. So again, that was, um, yeah, that was, I was busy there and Gemma was giving me like little things to do here and there. So, cause I, I'm so, um, I always need to keep like, keep busy. I'm no good if I just sit there and just wallow in myself. That's just the sort of person that I am. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't, um, maybe I will like when, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't think I have gone through the grieving process yet because it has, it's all happened so quickly. Yeah. Um, so obviously like from January to now, I've had like three surgeries. Um, I've had untold amount of hospital appointments. Um, and hearing the word cancer all in all was just like an, an, another thing. That's why I didn't actually come home. That's why I did stay, stay at work on the boat when I, when I got told, because if I was to come here, then that's when I'd end up going into my head. So, um, I mean, people, people have their ways of dealing with things and that's just, um, my way of dealing with it and to keep positive as well. Like that's such a, that's my one thing that I would say is just no matter how hard it gets, just keep positive, like in just in anything, even in just your general life, like your body is such a powerful, powerful thing. And I'm actually seeing a healer now as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen him three times, like a spiritual healer. Mm -hmm. um, I got recommended to go and see him. And the way that he sat down and explained it to me was he said, your body, he said, think of it when you eat a bar of chocolate, your body feeds off that sugar. He said, the negativity is exactly the same thing. He said, your body feeds off that negativity. It just in, like in general, not just, um, not just what I'm going through and other people are going through, but just in general, your body does like feed off of that negativity so he said you just always need to think positive and I've seen like so many people see me and they're like you're such like a positive person and like you, you like you would never think that anything's wrong with me because I am just up and I'm going and I'm getting on with my life and mm. um a friend of mine um an old person on board a boat she said to me she said you just need to pull it in your backpack and take it with you wherever you go she said it's always going to be there but you just need to rock on with your life and just get on with it and that's exactly what I'm doing mm. and I'm actually I am I would say I'm like I'm proud of myself because I know how like how I was before like with hospitals and stuff and I've actually overcome so much now and it's yeah it's I'm I would say I'm but yeah I am proud of myself and it's it's I just want to put the message out there to everybody so mm. yeah sorry I was about to learn again there no, no, that's fantastic and I, I completely agree with you I think mindset is so powerful and a negative mindset is very toxic. And if you look at the word disease and you break it up into two words, yeah. dis ease. So that is disease in the body. And yet emotional distress can change into a physical ailment. And there's a great book by Louise Hay called You Can Heal Your Life. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you examples of um, the emotional meaning behind particular illnesses. And it's really interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I think my mum just shouted out, we've got that. I think we've actually got, she's, my mum's currently in the kitchen with the flowers, but I think she, she just shouted out that we've got it. We've got that book here. So I, I haven't actually read it. I didn't know that we had that book, but um, I will have to have a look, a little look into that now. Yeah, <laughs> she's kind of like, just dropped me in there, but no, I will. I will, Yeah. I will have a look at that book. No. Yeah. It is your, yeah. Your mindset and everything just in everyday life is just so like your, your health and your wellness is so important. Um, just yeah in everyday life and yeah it does it does really really yeah it does affect you mm. so how has this experience experience changed you do you think it's definitely made me a stronger I mean I, I was mentally strong anyway but mm. this has made me like I'd say a thousand times headstrong because I've had to deal with everything my, like myself and it's go like people can say oh like it's okay I'm here for you but it's you going through it as a person like they're not going they're not going through that like you're actually going through that as a person so you have to have um a really like strong or try and have a really really strong yeah like mindset and head and yeah it's really made me it's actually driven me to do what I want to do now which was my flower stand so it's yeah it's made me such a strong person and just to like 
any anything can happen in like something can happen tomorrow something can happen the next day your life is basically too short to not do what you want to do so or like worry about what other people think of you and Richard that that's gone through my mind as well and I didn't want people to feel sorry for me with my flowers that's gone through every, trust me everything has gone through my mind like I didn't want I was I'm in an iron whether to do the whether to do my floating florista Instagram which has now become um quite like really successful uh, because I, I knew um, like my personal Instagram and my floating florista Instagram is different so I haven't actually posted anything on there to do with um my diagnosis just because I didn't want people to feel sorry for me but to be honest I sat there the other day and I thought I'm just being silly like they're not it's no one's gonna people are gonna feel sorry for me but they they're gonna buy my flowers and um order for me because they like my work not because they but like every, so everything does go through your mind and mm it's made me such a person and just to stop to tell basically to tell myself to stop being silly like I see there some days and I'm like oh and I'm just like Gemma just stop being silly like you just got to get on with it it's like it's your life like you are a strong person and yeah so it's made me mentally strong and physically strong as well mm. like especially after going through my surgeries and stuff it's just made me yeah like just to get get on with it I mean not being able to walk for like a week after I had my first hysterectomy was um, crazy but I literally I I made myself I gave myself tasks every day and I accomplished them tasks when I was there even if it was just walking for 10 minutes or reading a book or writing down how I feel it's mm -hmm. just yeah it's just really put me in a good yeah in a good mindset mm. you your story reminded me of an accountability call that I did today with a group of mine and the lady mm -hmm said to me she attended a webinar where people had to share a gratitude and one woman had lost 24 people in the space of a year and a half like close friends or yeah. family loved ones yeah. and when she was asked to share her gratitude she said i am grateful for death and everyone were oh was so surprised by her response and the reason why she said that is that it's taught me to be present to really listen and pay attention to yeah. you know where i am right now who am i talking to what am i doing and just to be in the moment and that's why she was grateful for death yeah life happens so quickly and as you said you can get stuck in your own head and you might have all these negative yeah. thoughts that really put you down and don't make you feel good. Um, but yeah, being present, I think really helps in combating all that chatter in our minds. Yeah, that, and obviously I, I, I think everyone can agree, like it's so easy to get stuck in your head that you just have to like, let basically let let that go and just be just be there and just be yeah just be now basically and that's exactly what what I'm doing I'm taking every day as it comes I mean tomorrow is um obviously we only launched a flower stand two weeks ago and this Thursday as in tomorrow will be the first day that I'm actually going to be there because I'm go I am going through my treatment and um I I, I mean I'm a little bit upset that I'm not going to be there but I know it's only going to be one day and then three weeks and it's going to happen again so um, but no, it's, it is what it is. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to have to just take it. Yeah. Take every day as it comes. And ev like everyone's allowed to have days where they, where they feel a little bit like iffy here and there. So, and that's one thing that I've learned as well. Like if I do need to, if I do need to rest and I'm going to rest, like your body, your body does, my body does need to heal and everyone's body needs to heal. So yeah, it's, I do, yeah, I do totally agree with the way that, yeah, the way that she's, um, said that like you do need to be present in yeah in everyday life and take every day as it comes because anything can happen to anyone or to any of you or any of us so so yeah so that is a good way of putting it mm. I've studied um, the topic of grieving and or grief mm -hmm. and it's really interesting I've also done an Instagram poll around this because crew have okay. asked how do you support someone who is grieving and obviously there are things to say and not to say so from your perspective what yeah. is helpful and how could people support someone who's going through a difficult time like you did 
I would just say just to be there for that person. I mean, it's, I mean, I like the girls on board and all my friends here and stuff, they, they was absolutely like incredible. I mean, where I, I actually couldn't physically get up for probably like five days up properly. Um, so yeah, so I had um, the chefs on board because I was recover I was recovering in co recovering in one of the guest cabins, um, I, which I was very grateful for. Like the owners actually found out that I was going through surgery and they didn't want me to recover on my own, um, like in a hotel or something. So they actually allowed me to recover on board, which I was um, very very thankful for for them for allowing me to do that. Um, and yeah, so I would just say sorry. <coughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah, so they, um, they, yeah, just I just say just to be there for, just to be there for the person and just to, um, anything they need, um, just yeah, just I would just say to be there. That was my one thing that I would say, um, and allow them to go through, yeah, yeah, allow them to go through the motions. I mean, everyone can say, oh, it is going to be okay, which it is going to be okay, but you are allowed to have your days where you feel a little bit funny, and if you just want to sit there and just talk to the person and just kind of ramble on which I do sometimes and I have done which I've done with the girls on board you just have to yeah just I'll just say just to be there for them and just to like help them in anything that they need I know obviously being in yachting and be, like being on board and stuff it, it can get a little bit hard because people get busy and you've got like daily tasks and stuff to do but just yeah I just say just to be there for yeah just for people that are going through going through things everyone is going through things sort of like their own personal battles every day but yeah just to be there for that person is my is my biggest thing and like everyone that was there for me I'm like truly thankful for and yeah they they always used to come and visit I mean I had to self-isolate for 14 days when I come back out of hospital so there was only allowed to come to the door but it was okay because it made me it made me happy. It was nice to speak to people and even just to come and say hi or just to sit down and just to, I don't know, watch whatever I was watching on the TV. But yeah, just to be there for, just to be there for people, I'd say, is the biggest thing. Fantastic. Out of anything, I would say. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And I can hear there's some, well, I can hear three core messages and that is to get your pap smear done and for chief stew to support their yeah, girls yeah, that's number one. That happen. and to positive mindsets yeah so cause I've, I've actually heard yeah yeah i would because yeah because i have heard that um i mean i know sometimes it is busy and you can't always get to appointments but um please like if if your girls or just anyone in general needs to go for an appointment especially um to do with a gyne gynecological issues I would say, yeah, please, please, please make sure you get them to go. And like I said, Gemma's got all the lists of the gynecologists around the world. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you Google them, wherever you are, you will be able to find um, some really good ones. I can even recommend the ones that I went to. Um, and they was incredible. The surgeon that I went to was incredible. So, yeah, that's the one big thing is positive mindset. Um, go and get your pap smear done whenever you need to go and get it done. I know that it's different in every like in every like country, like the yeah. age and the how yeah. long you have to wait to go and get it done. And yeah, and just to always keep positive. Um, even just waiting for results. I mean, I've got my third, I've got a scan, my CT scan in three weeks, which will show whether um the treatment is working. And again, I'm gonna be um they they call it scan scan anxiety, which I'm gonna have that, but I know if the results come back and it hasn't shrunk again then they will just give me more treatment and hopefully it will go so yeah so just um yeah pap smear um positive mindset and yeah that's what i would what i would say is a, is the biggest is the biggest thing mm. thank you so much Gemma, for sharing your journey with us and that's okay I, thank you for yeah my heart really goes out to you um not with sympathy <laughs> but with for your courage your bravery <laughs> your zest for life i think it's so inspiring and thank you for yeah that sharing that with us because i think it's contagious it yeah it is definitely so yeah no thank you for asking me to i mean it's good that i'm actually in the right frame of mind to share it like to share it out now and it's been because i've had um yeah such like good um like comments and stuff from it and i just need to get sp like basically spread the word i know i have a feeling the word's been spread quite quickly anyway um but no definitely just yeah please please listen to this message and yeah it is it is a big thing so thank you for asking me to 
um yeah talk about it and it's it's good it's actually made me feel yeah it's made me feel it has made me feel good to actually talk about it so thank you for that thank you Gemma and sending you lots of love and all the best for your flower stand this weekend thank you yes um a floating cluster will be there so yeah so thank you for that and I will speak to you soon yes <laughs> thank you